Hello everyone, today I'll be showing you a red and black deck I came up with because of a quest I had to do, basically as a joke. But then it turns out the deck can be pretty fucking decent. Honestly, I thought when you combine red and black you're supposed to play aggro or some shit. Instead, I just filled my deck up with removal spells, early game, black units and obviously big creatures to finish off. Now, the first game I'm showing you was against a uh, merfolk rush deck, obviously. I do a slight misplay by hitting the lightning strike on the wrong unit, but it doesn't end up mattering. I have two lightning strikes anyway. And the important part about this deck, I shouldn't say important, but some of the key parts of the deck are the severed spreads or whatever the fuck, I can't even read anymore and active treason cards. It's basically a 5 mana combo that lets you steal an opponent's card, use it and then sacrifice it to kill another opponent's card. Pretty good for 5 fucking mana. The Rekindling Phoenix though is one of the MVP cards. It's a shame I don't have more than one of these. It's pretty upsetting at times, but it's just such an efficient card when your opponent doesn't have a lot of removal or when they're playing a merfolk deck, any removal. So you can keep sacrificing the phoenix, getting so much value. I attack with the phoenix and then I use the severed strands to kill an unblockable creature, sacrificing my phoenix and healing me for 4 HP. Pretty fucking good, I would say. My opponent is already running out of steam in spite of having a ton of creatures and all he can do is keep attacking, that's what any rush deck can do. I get a third lightning strike though, like I said, this deck is full of fucking removal and I even start hitting the rush deck in the face with my phoenix. I'm not even concerned about defending, he keeps pulling tricks out of his back, trying to keep up the HP but I get another removal spell. Just like I said, this deck is fucking stuck with removal, I'll show you the deck obviously after the games. And my opponent is pretty much done, I even draw a card that lets me sacrifice my creature to draw even more cards and like we can already see the rekindling phoenix doesn't fucking die. So I get 3 cards and in spite of having only 4 mana this game is mine. Here we go. <laughs> my opponent digests the loss and it's all over. <laughs> The second game I wanted to show you is out of pure fucking joy because there is nothing I hate in this game more than mono red and <laughs> this time around I have less removal spells but I have my doom dissenter, one of the fewer creatures that just blocks forever because if they actually kill him you get a 2-2 zombie so they're obviously not going to attack if they can avoid it. I also get the reassembling skeleton and my primo death which marks creatures for death and then comes in and kills them. Now, my opponent is running Risk Factor because, uh, because it's one of the most bullshit cards in the game, but because he played it so early, I decided I'm going to take the damage and not let him draw three cards. He has a goblin on the field, but I'm about to kill the goblin anyway, and he decides to sacrifice the goblin out of spite to kill my skeleton, but this skeleton is invincible. Anytime they kill it, unless they exile it, and they're not going to exile a fucking 2-drop, you can play it again. I only have two of them in my deck I think, but they're just so fucking valuable for this deck in particular. My opponent has only 3 fucking mana, a lot of cards you would think, but not that many useful ones when he keeps having to play card draw and hitting me directly in the face. Now I play my Twilight Prophet because that's one of the best cards in the deck and can start healing me while also dealing damage to the opponent, that's the special ability, but obviously he's going to get rid of it because that card can fuck his entire strategy. Fair enough, exiles it even, <laughs> just in case I had a way to bring it back. But now I finally have enough mana, enough red mana, to play my Bladewing and I think about it for a second and I decide not to be greedy and wait for the kicker cost because I don't have a lot of lands anyway. My opponent kicks into gear, plays the risk factor again and hits me for another 4 damage which honestly I shouldn't have accepted it because when you're playing against a burn deck like mono red you can see that things get kind of iffy. I admit I knew he was starving for cards, I didn't know he had so many good ones though. So he almost fucking kills me, I start pressuring with the blade wing, it's a good thing I decided to put it down. He hits me for 3 more damage but he's finally out of cards, out of steam. I think that maybe not taking the 4 damage was the correct play but as you can tell 
you don't want to give a burn deck any more cards than they absolutely need to have. He finally plays a goblin and pieces the fuck out. Now let's look at the actual list. Obviously I call this deck Dark Red because my finishers, my high cost cards, the ones that are actually supposed to win me the game in a more control centered matchup, not when my opponent is rushing me. Most of them are fucking red, obviously I have just the one primal that because I love this card. It's probably not, not that even fucking good, but I love the idea of mentally pressuring your opponent by letting them know by the way, at any point, point I can play this and kill all your creatures as if I had an AoE. An unconditional AoE that hits only you. So, let's start from the lands. I have only one of these, unfortunately, so I'm running normal lands and just one of these. That lets you get it in untapped if you've already played the normal one. Uh, I already started with the finishers, so might as well focus on the expensive creatures. This one sacrifices a card which is perfect for my deck and gives you a 6-6 six, six for 4 mana which has flying and trample of course, amazing card, I have just one of them unfortunately. Also the Twilight Prophet I already mentioned, I love how this card can turn the game for you. If they can't instantly get rid of this, as long as you have a total of 10 cards in the field so lands actually count, you can have 5 lands and 5 creatures and this becomes activated and you start absolutely monstering them. Also, it's so weird, but I don't think it actually says so in the description, but if you draw a land with the Twilight Prophet, y the effect doesn't trigger. So you just draw again. Maybe it's the, the city's blessing that does this. I don't fucking know, but an amazing card. Rekindling Phoenix, I think I already showed why this card is so amazing. Once again, I think it's a mythic, so I have just one. Varyx Bladewing, I got this from a Dominaria draft and honestly this card kind of doesn't really fit into this deck. It's just a 4-4 four, 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 four that happens to have flying. A lot of the time I'll have to play it for the normal cost, but still, for 4 mana it has flying, it has potential and obviously it has a good body. Demanding Dragon, I think this is pretty fucking expensive. But it can hit your opponent for 5 in the face unless they sacrifice creatures, so it's a an expensive removal spell that has flying and 5-5. So pretty fucking good if you think about it. I already mentioned Primal Death, I think I've shown this card many times. <laughs> A fucking amazing, for one mana. <laughs> you get to psychologically attack your opponent every turn. <laughs> pretty fucking cool if you ask me. Burning Sun's avatar, expensive as fuck to deal 3 damage to a creature, but I guess it's just an, an elaborate fire elemental at the end of the day, so Pretty decent, you need a lot of red mana though, so that can be a problem. Etali Primo Storm, I've never gotten to attack with this card, so honestly this is a removal magnet, so you can play some of your better cards. Inescapable Blaze, because I think it's very cheeky to have 6 damage that ca can be countered by your opponent. And finally, Latlis the Dragon Queen, who summons a 5-5 dragon token if you play another dragon. Obviously this isn't a dragon deck, but I do have one two dragons I could play and if I can boost the Varyx Bladewing to summon two dragons, you can imagine how quickly the board fills up. So pretty decent end game creatures, obviously I can't exactly say I am focusing on something, I'm just trying to add the best cards I have from black and red. Now let's look at the starter of the deck, like I said I have a lot of removal, I even run 2 shocks because I've played against so many fucking aggro decks, that's why I have 2 shocks in here and also 4 lightning strikes. Obviously you can also hit them in the face with these cards so they're pretty fucking good. 4 murders, like I said I want all the removal in the world, I think for 3 mana destroying any creature is pretty fucking good, I know there are better cards like the... 2 mana card that destroys non-legendaries, but obviously I don't have that one or I would use them. And now I wanted to show the Severed Strands and Act of Treason, basically the concept, the original concept of the deck I wanted to build around. I don't get to show them off that, that often, but it's a 5 mana combo that's pretty fucking good because you remove 2 creatures from your opponent after you steal one of theirs to kill another one with Severed Strands and you get held back. So it's one of one of the, my favorite combos in the game so far, obviously I just have one Severed Strands, only two Acts of Treason. That's not the entire concept of the deck, but it's one of the coolest tricks I have. 
once again, even more removal spells. This is basically a removal spell that says kill a creature that's 2-2 or sacrifice one of yours and remove a creature that's up to 5 life. So pretty fucking good, I run 3 of them. Now, Doom Dissenters, 4 of them because your opponent stops attacking when you play a Doom Dissenter. Pretty fucking good way to stop them from killing you at the start of the game. And 2 Reassembling Skeletons because you don't want too many of them. I think 2 is the perfect number because they're fucking unkillable. <laughs> Costly Ponder is to give me some card draw. I think I'm running slightly too many of these cards considering I don't have that many creatures I can sacrifice without losing anything. Basically I have the 4 Doom Dissenters, 2 Reassembling Skeletons and the Rekindling Phoenix. Everything else actually will cost me. So I think I'm kind of going too hard at the concept of sacrificing creatures. Maybe 3 of them isn't the correct number but it's still a pre pretty fucking good card and you can also combo costly ponder with act of, act, of, act of treason to once again get a pretty f cool fucking combo. So that's it, I think I went through all the cards. This is a pretty fucking fun deck and a pretty solid deck. I think the concept of the deck is more important than anything else. Obviously not everyone is going to have these cards, not everyone is going to have a random very blade wing. But I think if you follow the concept of the deck, it's pretty fucking solid and can pull you off some pretty amazing wins. It does kind of fine, even great against rush decks. Against mid range, I think you have the best matchup possible. And against control decks, they're obviously going to outgun you. They're going to end up with bigger threats. My biggest threat, honestly, in the, the deck is probably the Dragon Queen combo with Varyx Blade Wing. So you could call this a combo mid range deck. But I think it's still pretty fucking solid, considering I'm a relatively new player and don't have all the cards. Anyway, thanks as always for watching the video, hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know if this helped you out. <laughs> Make your own fucking deck, I don't know. Or inspired you to try some kind of combo yourself. See you on the next video or stream, probably on Monday. Bye.